And maybe the suggestion by Victoria was good still too, for, for if your English is less developed, uh, you could include the subtitles in English, so then for some reading English as well may be easier, may support the process. But, um, well, I can say also very welcome, I feel very honored that we have this opportunity to work together with the EAMBA. It's, it started, um, uh, uh, I'll introduce briefly, it started about three years ago, then my wife Yeti, who will, who will join in only later, did this uh, webinar, and I, we, we, we wrote a book in English, on, in, in Dutch, on mindful communication, and we were basically editors, wh where we included all kinds of valuable programs on mindful communication. And um, then later on, we got the opportunity to, to have an English uh, version. And then we were very happy to start working together with Victoria, who, who, who really supported with the English and all kinds of other things as well. And um, we, uh, we've, uh, we haven't invented very much ourselves, but we've basically um, sort of introduced programs that we had become familiar with in the course of time uh, where mindful communication was really addressed as a way of how we can learn all kinds of skills and ability in the field of mindful communication because it's one of the most important things in life uh, how to relate to others how to relate to ourselves and um, well we were very happy I think the first time that we invited her was about, about 10 years ago, then, then we invited Susan Gillis Chapman, whom we have, had, had discovered, who had written a lovely book on mindful communication, the five keys to mindful communication. And she, she started coming to the Netherlands a few times that, that we invited her. And quite soon, I think on her first travel from Canada to the Netherlands, then Greg also came along, Greg Heffron, and uh, they were teaching the program together that you will be able to, to, to have a taste of uh, this evening. And uh, well, it was very natural for us to have the program that gradually arose from the book from Susan Gillis Chapman in, in our book. And uh, at a certain time, it was adopted also as uh, green zone communication or nowadays you also sometimes call it uh, green light communication as I understand and for, for the Dutch uh, version we had asked um, uh, Esther Hasselman and uh, unfortunately for, for personal reasons she, she is not able to join uh, tonight but, uh, but then we, we decided for the English version to have Greg and Esther and we were also very happy then that uh, we, we, heard, we heard the name of Chris Trani, uh, a coach who, who, who's very skilled in mindful communication and, and, and is, has also really become an expert in, in this program. And it feels like an honor that uh, both of you are, are here now. I understood that Susan Gillis Chapman, I, I, I had a mail contact this week. Unfortunately, she's not, not able to, to be here but she she has all the trust in that it will be a lovely uh, webinar and well we, we are very honored that both of you can uh, can share about this pr beautiful program so welcome i would say no thank you so much fritz for the wonderful introduction and we thought we would begin with a kind of landing meditation get us grounded and landed and uh chris tranny is going to lead us Oh, I'm very happy to do that. Thank you all for being here and welcome. So we're going to do just a, a brief meditation, maybe eight to ten minutes. And, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, eight to ten minutes. And it's simple and straightforward what we're going to be doing, just as a way to fully arrive. And just a little bit of explanation. In Green Zone Communication, we call this... Um, particular practice, touching, getting in touch with our natural communication system. So what we mean by that is our innate capacity to pay attention to what goes on inside us and around us. And 
the three terms that we use for this are simple, awake body, tender heart, and open mind. So in this practice, we're just going to take a moment to touch in to each of those three aspects of the natural communication system where we're always receiving information both inside us and around us. And consequently, uh, we receive wisdom from what we're experiencing if we're open to that. So take a moment to find your just right posture. You've meditated before. You know what feels right to you with the importance of being relaxed but alert. And for this practice, we encourage you to keep your eyes open. You can have your gaze downward and softened a bit. But we encourage eyes open because we want to be here fully present. So let's start with the awake body. First, just noticing what is your body awake to? in this moment. What are the sensations? In your feet, your lower body, your torso. arms, hands, head. Just allow your attention to move where it wants to go naturally to notice what is awake in the body right now. Maybe subtle, maybe strong, maybe a mix. We're not looking for anything in particular. We're just noticing what is there right now. What's awake for us in this body that takes in so much information? Now with this focus on the body, let's zoom in and bring some particular attention to our face, our jaw, our mouth, our tongue, our ears, our eyes. So important in our day-to-day -day experience as humans, but also so important in our communication with others. When we think of ourselves in communication, we oftentimes think of our face. And just take a moment to pay attention to what your eyes are taking in. Objects, shapes, textures, colors. No need to strain, just let information come naturally.
And also take a moment to notice that space around your ears and between your ears where hearing happens. What do you hear right now? Do you hear my voice when I speak? You hear silence when I stop. You may hear sound in your room. You may hear sound in your head talking to you. Just notice what's there. This is all part of awake body. Now with that appreciation of awake body, let's transition to what we call tender heart. And this is where we go to check in with our emotional experience. So first, just notice, where does your attention go to check in with emotion? Maybe it's along the midline in the throat or chest or belly. but it could be anywhere unique to you. And we're not efforting to figure out what's there. We're just noticing even subtle sensations that are emotional in nature. And remember, even if you're not experiencing much activity here, that's OK. We could call that rest, peace. Just allow whatever emotional flavors are present right now. Good. Good. Now, one more stop on our natural communication system tour. Open mind. Open mind. Bring your attention to that space where thoughts happen. Maybe in this moment you have lots of thoughts flickering, maybe only a few. Pay attention to the space in which the thoughts are happening. Sometimes I think of this like looking at the vast night sky. And the thoughts are just like these tiny flickering stars that come in and out of existence. But what remains is that big space, big space. Open mind. Appreciate the space.
Now for just a few moments, expand your awareness to take in a wake body, tender heart, and open mind. Feel the interconnectedness of these aspects within you that contribute to a sense of wholeness and presence. Rest there. Appreciate there. This is an experience of a green zone, a natural, resting, open space where we connect with our humanity. May the qualities of awake body, tender heart, and open mind stay with you as we share this experience this evening and stay with you in the days to come. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. Yes, uh, what Chris just said was really an important part of what we're doing here today. And I, I would like you to hold that experience and bring that forward throughout the rest of the talk today. Um, let's see, do I need to be spotlighted or something I'm not seeing myself on screen? Um, I, I can spotlight you. There we go. Thank you so much, Katarina. Let's just start and I, I get to it in a, okay. in, sure, as soon sure. as I got it. I okay, would. sure. <laughs> so there we are. So that opening meditation is actually a huge part of what we're doing here today. And it's actually the good news of what we're doing today. So do just bring that forward, even right now, even right at this very moment. Bring that forward as you're listening to my voice, as you're looking at the slides I'm going to present today, and keep this in mind. We will come back to it. So <clears throat> I promised my co-presenters I wouldn't present too many slides, and then I made a lot of slides. So here we go. So why is this important for us? Why is it important for mindfulness trainers uh, that we, we actually look to this modality, this particular incredible modality that uh, Susan Gillen, Gillis Chapman created out of, out of what would be some very arcane Tibetan Buddhist um, practices that would be very hard to understand is that it's actually important for us because we have some issues. And if we're honest, we know that. So we trained in mindfulness, we have all this incredible training, and then we're in conversations and something hits us. And we feel shocked, ashamed, embarrassed, insulted, whatever it is, somebody tells us something we just did not expect. And where does our mindfulness go in this moment? It's very hard to find, right? And we've all had these moments. We all do have these moments. And you know, if, if, you, if you've never had a moment like this, just stick around, life will bring one to you. And then the problem is once we lose contact with mindfulness, sometimes we go further and we get lost in all sorts of negative emotions, and we do or say something that we can really regret. And I'm sure I'm not telling you anything you don't know, right? So then, then what does that 
result in is we feel ashamed and embarrassed again. I mean, my goodness, we're mindfulness trainers. How, how embarrassing, how humiliating, right? So then we get into a mental spiral based on the past history, the future fears, all of these things. And that can actually pull us further away from mindfulness. And this pattern, this pattern, this spiral, this feedback loop makes us distracted, further distracted. So we can't connect so much with others. Actually, we're, I'm so lost in what I'm thinking about myself that I'm not really listening fully. And I'm no longer really listening to myself. That's what discursive thoughts are. They're a pattern of losing awareness of the present moment. So, you know, it's not that I'm not listening to others because I have some powerful work to do. I'm not really doing the work right, right in that moment. And this has to do with, you know, all these difficult emotions, shame, And our personal distraction is not just personal. It's never just personal. We, these things affect societies. They affect the whole world, right? And we, we start to lose trust in the present moment. And we start to seek out distraction compulsively. And that shapes society. And this really hits us at the holiday dinner table sometimes. Maybe that relative you haven't seen in a long time and you hold very different views about things. And here you are, this very dignified, well-trained mindfulness trainer and uh, Goodness gracious, there you are at the dinner table at the holiday and your face is hot, your cheeks are hot and you're sweating and you know, your throat is tight or all of these things. And you're, you're losing track of what's going on. And this of course is not our aim, it's not our goal. It's not where we want to be. We don't want to go through these patterns over and over and over. Endless cycles of suffering. So it gets called sometimes, right? So we don't have to. We want something better, better and we can use all these skills that we have in these situations with our, with ourselves, our families, our societies, and help everyone connect. That's what we want. So just for a moment, I just want to say that the, the crucial point here is what we're paying attention to. And the, the goal of this particular system, green zone communication, green light communication, is to actually just give us a few touch points to tune in to with our mindfulness, to recognize in relationship and communication with others, how to move forward, when to pull back, and how to deal with murky, confusing situations. So, You know, sometimes we think, let's, let's be honest, sometimes we hold the mental pattern that mindfulness is going to keep us away from pain. You know, that if we do this perfectly, I won't ever encounter pain, you know? But pain is actually extremely important. It's a natural quality. And it allows us to pay attention. Pain is actually a critical stimulus for mindfulness. 
And without it, we become disconnected, disabled, distracted, and unhelpful. So, you know, um, <laughs> mindfulness is not a magical uh, rainbow unicorn fairy. And I, I you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sure that's disappointing, right? Because uh, actually my girlfriend laughed at this slide because she loves rainbows and unicorns and fairies. And she's also a, a mindfulness trainer as well. And, and it's great. This is not about aesthetics, right? But it's about a kind of fantasy that we can create about what mindfulness is. And the truth is mindfulness, we, we need to be able to feel pain. We need to be able to feel it acutely. We need to be able to feel subtle pain and we need to know what to do. So the pain in communication that we're talking about is anxiety, right? And, I, and we all know anxiety. And again, we, we, mindfulness does help with anxiety, of course. You know, that's, we all love that, actually. There's, there's something incredibly powerful about that. It reduces anxiety. And we see this with ourselves. You may see this with your clients. You've seen this on retreats. Everybody calms down. And yet there's something about this, the intense stimulation of interaction, again, whether it's within your family or your society or your neighbor or whoever it is that can really get underneath to the core, down to the nerves, those very sensitive emotional nerves that we all have. So uh, where did I do it? Let's see. There we go. So anxiety is still an issue for us, you know, global anxiety, for goodness sake, that comes up, right? And so sometimes we can fall into kind of cliches of peace because we're clinging. We're clinging to, well, we're, we're trying to avoid, maybe it's more sort of avoidance of that anxiety. So let's just agree to just disagree, you know, and, and, and it is what it is, you know. My uncle is who he is, so I'm just going to not deal with that. Or, and this is from, this is critically, this is from lack of confidence that we do this. Or we attack. And ironically, actually attack is from lack of confidence as well. We want to push, we want to make somebody an enemy, we want to push them away so that they can't hurt us, right? Maybe we'll punish them in some way that'll make them withdraw, even subtly. Or, and this one's very interesting, we pretend to understand. We mimic a connection that we, we're actually not feeling. We're smiling, we say, oh my God, I really understand what you're saying. We, we don't understand what they're saying. Actually, we're quite shocked by what they're saying. And it's, it's, a, it's a way to manage that same pain and fear, right? So here's, this is, we're not gonna touch deeply into the material of green light communication, green zone communication today. We can't, this is too brief. So this is a very simplified version of something that's much more complex that we could I could talk about for four days. Uh, some some people in this room have heard me talk about it for four days, but it's you know uh, suppressing truth can be a way to manage pain, which lands us in codependence. Suppressing compassion, there's the attack, lands us in feeling cut off. So these are not satisfying ways of managing pain. These are actually quite unsatisfying. Now, I want to say there's two kinds of pain. And we say, you know, there's, there's the pain of life. 
unavoidable pain, like a wound. This happens to be my foot. <laughs> the other day, I, I was walking on the beach and a rock rolled over on my foot. And there you go, you have a wound. You know, it's not, nobody intended it, it just happens. And it hurts. Naturally, it hurts. Again, thank goodness it hurts, because otherwise you wouldn't know. So I was able to try to, you know, take care of this wound. And that's the key. If you take care of the wound, I, I cleaned it. I'm here in Hawaii. I'm in the tropics. Infection is a very real thing, and you don't want it. So I cleaned it very carefully, and I replaced the bandages every day. And I put iodine on it, you know, to protect it. You protect the wound. That's very important. You don't just go running around further in the mud with your wounds. It's a very bad idea. So when you feel that wound, when you're mindful of feeling that wound, you, you stop, you pull back, you protect. Now, otherwise, you get unnecessary pain which is an infected wound. And then there you are in the hospital and it's much, much more unpleasant. So we can be mindful of taking care of ourselves in the midst of communication. There's a lot to say about this. We're just gonna to barely touch on this. So these wounds are going to happen. And preventing the infection is important for us, it's important for our societies. Now, what this can allow in terms of communication, if we take care of ourselves, if we take care of others when they have a wound, whatever that is, and we don't have to go deeply into this today, what does it mean to take care of someone when they've had an emotional wound? Is it, it opens up communication again. It allows them to heal and be open to a real exchange. Now, a real exchange of communication goes in, in both directions. It's not just talking at somebody. It's not just listening. It's a genuine exchange. And you feel it. When that happens, you can feel the connection. And there's a vibrancy. There's an aliveness to it. Now, if that connection breaks, that bridge does not connect, you do not want to move forward. Now, this happens moment by moment. This is not a one-time deal. There's no people who you say, well, that person's broken permanently. That's not how it works. These are moments. So you feel it and you don't move forward when the situation's not right. So you could hold steady with mindfulness. And if it's difficult, if it's too difficult, you feel wounded by being there, you back off and tend to your wounds. And then there's those situations where it's just unclear. It could go either direction. You know, is this bridge even gonna hold a vehicle? You're not sure. So, then you have to be very careful, careful. We're using the pun here. So full of care. These are the situations to be especially slow, kind, and even more encouraging. You know, when somebody feels like they're on the edge of breaking the connection, that's the time to be, to really lean in. And then communication can open again. And you're, if you're mindful, you actually feel that moment. And then it's time to move forward. Now, it doesn't mean it's all, you know, rainbows and kittens. You could have a very serious conversation with an, with an, when communication opens up. You could talk about serious, difficult things. In fact, it's, it's when you should talk about difficult things. But feel it, feel it. You have the capacity and you have the capacity because of that natural communication system that Chris took us through. 
we tend to centralize in one of these or two of these and ignore the third. Broaden out your awareness, use your skills, broaden out and balance. Keep these three channels open. It's the best possible medicine, both for you personally and for society. So um, for this next demonstration, actually, um, Katarina, can you uh, add Chris to my screen? Great. So Chris and I are, are just going to have a, a basic conversation. I mean, we're, we're colleagues, we're friends, we know each other. Um, so Chris, I just, uh, and oh, and you, your job, everyone watching, your job is to use your awake body, tender heart, and open mind to witness. What do you sense? And then we're going to have breakout rooms talking about this for 10 minutes. Okay, so really drop in, see what you can gather. Uh, hey, Chris, thanks for, for jumping on the call. I really, um, I just wanted to, I just want to tell you this crazy story. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if you have some time to process. Yeah, um, yeah, tell, tell me, tell me what's going on. Well, you know, I was, I was hanging out with Suzanne and she, she was doing that thing she does, you know, uh, same, the same stuff we've talked about before. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's, it was so frustrating. It was so frustrating. Um, you know, when she, there's that certain tone of voice she gets and she drops in and I, I just feel like I don't know what to do to, um, I don't know what to do to change it. I mean, I just feel like we've been through this so many times, you know, and I, um, just, I, I, you know, I, I'm, when I think about different things I've tried in the past, they just seem like they're not working. Um, you know, you know what I mean? Like, like stuff, you and I have talked about stuff. And, uh, um, I don't know if you have any ideas or so, um, so, wow, I'm feeling weird. Chris is doing this thing and I just don't, I mean, I feel like we connect usually, but I don't know what's going on. Something's going on and, uh, just not, you know, it just brings up a lot of scatteredness i feel very scattered suddenly i don't feel confident i kind of like i don't know what to say anymore and uh just it takes me back to being like a kid or something like a, trying to talk to my dad or Okay, and that's the end of our scene here. So just feel like whatever you've just experienced. And then what, I, what we'd like you to do is to go into breakout rooms. You're gonna be there with, with, there'll be three of you in a room. So say hello, say your name, say where you're from. And then two minutes each, share your experience just witnessing this in terms of what you felt in your body, what you felt at an emotional level, and what you noticed in your mind. And then there'll be four more minutes to, to talk, and then we'll bring you back and take a break right after that for five minutes. Okay, so Katarina, go ahead and um, take open? people. Yeah, please. So I'm not including you and Chris, Fritz, Victoria. Okay. Correct.
so just in very briefly, just in a, in a minute or two, is there any responses that anybody would like to offer in terms of what you noticed witnessing the experiment with myself and Chris? Not every, everybody is back. Not everybody's back. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. How do you, how do we tell when they're back? Oh, they just start popping <laughs> up. They just start popping in. The, yeah, the gallery starts populating. Okay, I now force closed. I yeah. force closed the room. Oh, okay, all right. We have one more minute. Okay, we'll we'll do that again. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See some familiar faces. Yeah, Chris Bacon. I see there. So good to see Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I see someone who looked very familiar but had a different name, but now she has her name back. Uh. <laughs> Hi, Chris. <laughs> hey, you done? Where'd you go? There you are. <laughs> I'm afraid I hit the wrong button and I ejected. I was in the middle of saying something. Oh, well. <laughs> I was talking about this. Zoom Zoom needs to move their button or make it less obvious or something. Okay, here we go. I think I think we're back now. Yeah, I think everyone's back. Chris, do you want to um, kind of repeat what I said just about oh, one yeah, or two? Yeah. So we're going to take a break in just a couple of minutes, but we're curious if anyone would like to share what you experienced with the um, the, the demonstration with the paper coming up and maybe what you talked about in your group just a just a few a few words about what that was like what did you notice and you can raise your virtual hand if you'd like you can go to the <coughs> button and raise virtual hand or um oh somebody said they can't hear very well so let's just go to chris bacon i see chris bacon's real hand up okay good i just want to share one thing that's that's sort of a next step. We all were contemplating what that looks like in real life when you don't have a sheet of paper. Mm. But there are expressions and things, and we detect that, and we, yeah, that's we really started massaging that. Yeah, and what does it look like when there's no paper? What what do you notice? Uh, well, there's obvious things like looking at your cell phone. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> And then the obvious ones like the still face baby experiment, but other ones are really can be really hard to detect when they're sort of trying to, they don't want to offend you. They're sort of trying to listen, but you see that it's very subtle. Yeah, and I think it's, it's impressive how our awake body starts to feel that so quickly, right? Even if it's just mm -hmm. some subtle sensation, we, we know something feels off, yeah. Fantastic. The awake, you, the awake body and then the, the tender heart too. Sometimes you get strange emotions coming up. You think, well, why am I feeling this way? Yes. And then your mind starts to say, why did they use that word? You know? So it's, it's all of that working together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Anyone else like to just share briefly? What was your experience with that? Demo. I think Jeffrey wants to share. Jeffrey, let's hear from Jeffrey. Hi. Um, as we were discussing it in, in our group, when I had experienced uh, the exercise, I noticed that I, uh, when, when, Chris, when you put the paper up, 
and Greg, you were talking about uh, first this other directed experience and then more and more yourself. First, there was a moment when I felt you connecting more with yourself and I thought, oh, will the paper lift now? And then that didn't happen. But um, we were talking in our group about uh, empathizing with your sadness. And, it, and I thought, you know, I tend to look at people's faces and don't always notice what is not so visible. And one was wondering about the sadness of the person behind the piece of paper. Mm. And that mm. uh, was uh, a powerful learning for me in the group session. Beautiful. You know, I, re I really appreciate you mentioning that, Jeffrey, because I've done this demo several times with Greg. And this is the first time that I noticed so much emotion in my heart from putting the paper up, I felt such uh, discomfort and disconnection that was painful to me, even though I knew it was an exercise. Uh, it, it felt really, really profound this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much, Jeffrey. Yeah, it's um, being able to understand the pain, feel our pain, allows us to then stay connected to mindfulness potentially that's where we could actually wonder in that beautiful way about the experience of the person behind the paper but when i'm lost in my narratives of past and future and maybe i'm a bad person i don't have the space for that right so it's really caring for ourselves is caring for the other person in a very pragmatic way yeah thank you So Greg, well, should we, we are, take well, we a quick? Are, we are just about uh, a little over 20 minutes away from end time. Should we still take uh, just a quick bathroom break and then come back to Q&A? There is Divya who wants to speak, maybe the last hand. Oh, oh, okay, sure. Is that sure. okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Not then okay. let's, go, let's go straight through. Yes. I think we'll be okay. Thank you. Can you hear me all right? Yes, yes. Good evening, everybody. Um, we had some really rich discussions, which I'm thankful for in our group. Um, I just thought I'd share a couple of things um, that, that came up very personally for me in your exercise. Um, and one was a reflection on how my friendships or even what I view as friendship has evolved maybe since I started practicing mindfulness um, to the extent that it's based a lot more on um, empathy and connection rather than maybe just shared experiences that I have with people. So when I think about the people in my life who I feel very deeply connected to, it's evolved rather than maybe because we went through this or I know them through that or we like the same thing. Um, underneath that is, you know, the, the, the two-way mindful communication has become a lot more uh, significant I think in terms of how I even connect to people in my life and what the the, the authenticity of friendship um, and then another thing which I was just very honest about was it made me realize how often I'm not present when I'm talking with my mother <laughs> and yeah what can mm. I say and you know it's, it's something I'm aware of anyway and it's, it can be difficult when someone's very close in your life and they're you know, it's not just one painful thing. <laughs> it can be a whole gambit. Um, but it's something I'm trying to sort of work through in terms of, you know, how energetically I can hold space for even the things that I might not consider, quotes painful, um, but doing that in a kind way, um, but also not contriving it because then that doesn't come across through. Um, do, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a very... yeah. The balancing that's, act. Yeah. So. No, that's lovely. Thank you. That's because that that balance, it's not a balance. It's not like we have, it's not a performance, right? We're actually, when you talk about being balanced, you're, you're balancing back towards, towards what's really going on in the present moment, which includes your own responses that are genuine, but also includes 
our ability to discern like, you know, what, what kind of conversation is possible with this person in this moment, which is not every conversation in every moment. We all know that, you know, we talk differently to somebody, you know, who's five years old and somebody who's 95 years old and, or different at work, at home, whatever, it's your mother, it's your neighbor. So um, it's not, I think that's very important what you said, actually, the idea that you can, you can hold that space without having to perform. And that's the good news of the mindful, the natural communication system. It actually discerns that in real time, in the present moment. In fact, it's the only place that that's discerned. So that's the good news today. The good news is actually we do have what it takes to do this. It is our true nature. So it's not a, a set of skills. A lot of what we do is actually kind of an untraining process. You can say that about mindfulness in general. A lot of it's an untraining process, but around relationship, we're untraining these unnecessary um, performances that we do, whether again, whether it's the attack or turning away or pretending to be an ally or whatever it is, and just kind of coming back to the simplicity of the present moment. Thank you so much. Yeah. So Fritz and uh, Victoria, if you can help us look for any other uh, questions, comments people have, we've got just a few minutes left. And if you do need a bathroom break, feel free to take that on your own since we didn't uh, have one incorporated in. I see that Vicky has raised hand. Vicky, we know Vicky. We know Vicky. <laughs> we know Vicky. <laughs> Vicky, speak, speak, speak. <laughs> oh it's a different um, vicky no it's a different vicky um i was <laughs> my oh, we, 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 it's okay yeah, we just need a different uh, uh, video yeah <laughs> go ahead vicky we can hear you and then we'll we'll search for your well, video one of the things that came up in our group um was that um you know we have our own conflict that is very hard for us to admit which in a, the situation um, with, you know, maybe talking to your mother or trying to listen to your mother um, is that we don't want to hurt their feelings, but we also can't admit that, um, you know, we really don't want to put in the effort. And so coming in, coming to, come, tell me, coming to grips with that in our own, um, mm, you know, habitualness is is it is also a key point in like maturing in you know how do we how do we start admitting those things about our own um bad habits um that get in the way yeah yeah do you want to say anything chris about that no go go ahead go ahead well i just you know why do we why do we not want to do it? Why do we not want to lean in and use our skills? It's almost always lack of confidence. It's a lack, it's a feeling that I'm gonna have to do something impossible. I'm not willing to do something impossible. I've tried it before, it didn't work and I'm not gonna do it. You know, so I don't have enough time for this. I don't have enough resources whatever. And, you know, two things there. One is maybe you don't, maybe you don't have enough time. Maybe you don't have enough resources in an inner way. Then you need to work on that. And that's very, very important. That's bandaging the wound. I need to step back from this relationship where I keep getting lost. Not, not because they're bad, but because I don't have the resources. So I need to step back, gather my inner resources until I feel strong, until I feel the strength to begin to tiptoe back in and experiment and try things in the present moment. There's no plan. I'm sorry to say there's no plan. <laughs> I don't know if you got that yet in this <laughs> presentation, but you can't, you can have, you can have ideas to try things you want to experiment with, but there is no grand plan. There's nobody's going to tell you what to say. Nobody could tell you what to say. If somebody told you what to say, it would shut down the conversation. 
because you would be lost in your head try to, trying to remember your script. And you would no longer be paying attention to the living, breathing human being you're there with who is having responses to what you're saying. You may have to go this way, that way, change your whole idea. So, <clears throat> so in order to, to go into the present moment, where actually so many things are possible, you know, in, in the present moment, so many things are possible. We need to feel strong. That's your practice. That's your mindfulness practice. And it's also your living practice of noticing in the present moment, even just watching a movie, you can notice in the present moment what's going on in terms of the people. Did the, did the communication open up? Did it close down? Is it right on the edge? And contemplate just the basics we presented today. We, there's so much we cannot touch today. There's so much we cannot touch. There's, there's very simple methods, little rubrics, ways of remembering this in real time that are very practical and easy to do and also go a thousand miles deep. I and mean, we could, again, we could talk for four days about that one diagram today. And we have very advanced trainings, both Chris and, and Vicky have been through. And so we can't go into all of that today, but just to use your mindfulness to notice, like the communication just broke down. You feel the pain because that's natural in every situation that's natural. I am going to just hold steady here. I don't know what's happening. I can't figure it out, but I'm not gonna keep blundering forward, saying more and more and more things. The person's not listening anymore. Why talk when nobody's listening? Okay, I can hold steady, but I have to hold myself. I have to hold the pain in my own heart. It's possible, it's possible to use these things in a very practical way. And Greg, yeah, and I, fi I find myself um, using a lot the term for now. For now, I simply want to be quiet. For now, I am not going to engage in a conversation because I think sometimes we over-dramatize it, right? As if we're making a declaration forever. But if we just say for now, for now. So thank you, Vicki, for bringing that up. But Greg and uh, Chris, would it be helpful, well, to share at least a little bit about the the three lights? Ah, uh, that might be at least a nice help for, well, as it has been for me, as a very simple but very practical help with, with which we can assess our communication a bit better. Certainly, we we. We talked a lot about that, actually, of whether we would present the three lights today. And in such a brief presentation, it's a bit challenging just because they're so simple, it's easy to misunderstand them. And yet they go so deep, there's actually a lot of questions that people have about them as soon as you get into them. But, but yes, very briefly, the idea that, you know, when the communication breaks down, it's like a red light when you're driving. And you and stopping is the appropriate response. And not stopping is quite dangerous. So actually just knowing when to stop. And then the green light, when the light is green, you go. It's also kind of a bad idea to stop in the middle when there's a green light. <laughs> you know, people behind you are ready to go. They need to go. And you can go together. You can go together. And it's coordinated. It's actually quite beautiful. And when the, the light is yellow or orange in some countries, that's there's things are in transition. It's unclear. And it's actually the time to, to slow down. That's the kindness, bringing up the kindness, encouragement, encouraging what's what somebody's doing that's correct, that's helpful, that's mindful saying, God, I really appreciate that about you. You know what you're doing that's, you know, I know that you're really upset. I know a lot is going on right now, but what you're doing right now with her and just bringing her the tea, that was so great. I just really appreciate that. Highlighting these things and, and allowing mindfulness to come to these good qualities and somebody can encourage them to actually open up again. 
So that's the, can you think of anything else, Chris? Well, I just want to add from my own experience that I appreciate so much about what I've learned about green light and green zone communication. But I think if I had to pick one thing, it's the how to pay attention to the yellow lights, how to pay attention to that first moment in myself that starts to feel unsettled or off balance. And I, sometimes I can't even really put words to it. But, you know, I found, be, you know, before learning all this, I certainly knew, I, I think I was pretty good at knowing when the light was red and to, you know, back off. And I certainly could feel when the light was green and, you know, keep going. But there was something so distinct and powerful about knowing that the yellow light was a thing that it was a thing that I could experience and track and, and start putting some words to or some bodily experience to so that to, for me, I feel that is my moment of empowerment. That is the moment where I can make a choice of whether it's going to go green or red, right? So I just want to reinforce that, that, that the, uh, all of the, the uh, insight around the power of the yellow light has been really profound for me. So true. And it's true personally, and it's true at a societal level. Yes. Right? The yellow light happens in societies. And how we respond to that makes all the difference. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Any other questions or concerns um confusions <laughs> confusions ideas suggestions and certainly you can put something in the chat if you wish while we're waiting uh, oh oh do we we're waiting greg maybe you uh tell them about what you're putting in the chat well uh, yeah i'm just going to put the place to get the slides if you want copies of the slides i'm going to put that in there We can add them to the post if you want to. Wonderful. Yeah, that would be and great. Then also add your email. I think your email address is already there. So people okay. can get in contact with sure. you for the full catastrophe of your program. Yeah. I'll put I'll put it in here too, just in case. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think this is there already. But maybe uh, people here want to copy it. Uh, just copy it now uh, for safety. Is that Ida raising your hand, Ida Linsa? Or you just you just looked at the light? She's, yeah. Maybe she's waving maybe at Ida. us. We know Ida too. <laughs> we know Ida too. <laughs> Hello, Ida. So even if there's no particular questions, one one thing I always like to ask at the end of programs is. What, what will you take away from this experience today? What is one little nugget of uh, wisdom or encouragement that you might take away? And you can feel free to put that in the chat box or you can uh, share that with us if you'd like to open up your, your mic and raise your hand. But what, what's one thing, one gift? We're in, we're in the season of gift giving. What's one gift maybe? you've received from being together today. And and perhaps, yeah, perhaps if you are comfortable putting it in the chat would be fun to see what different people are experiencing. I see some typing happening. Good. Chat is just you know, while we're, a bit easier. While we're waiting here too, I just want to I want to encourage everyone to, when you encounter that shame spiral that I talked about at the very start, you know, a feeling like here you are, you're a mindfulness trainer, and you just said something really awkward or inappropriate, or actually something that you actually don't deeply feel. It was ungenuine, whatever it was, it was harsh. I really want you to take care of that like the wound. 
take care of that shame spiral by taking yourself, we talk about this, this is part of our name of our organization, Green Zone, is to take yourself to a green zone, which is to actually create a positive environment for your mind, your body, heart, and mind. So think about what that positive environment can be. It could be relational. It could be taking yourself to have a conversation with someone uh, who you really trust and you actually feel that connection with. It could be getting yourself back home. It could be making yourself a, a nourishing meal. It can be going for a walk by a beautiful lake. It can be sitting down and writing about it. It can be doing artwork, whatever it is. So just know, like when that thing happens, you have something to do and you can do it. And it makes a huge difference for you and for everyone else. Because we need all your skills. The world needs your skills. Your societies need your skills. Your families need your skills. Your work needs your skills. So we don't want you lost in spirals of shame. We need your energy. Yes, I love uh, some of what we're seeing, Greg, in the chat. Um, mm. Vicki, Vicki, I particularly was drawn to yours about that dismissive tendency. And I think as meditators, we can trick ourselves sometimes, right, into saying, well, <laughs> it's, it's okay, I'll just stay equanimous with this, but really, it, it is a dismissive tendency or an avoidance. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, Ruthie, the uh, green zone tool for the shame spiral. Yep, yep, yep. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, shame spiral, Katharina. Because we don't we don't talk about that enough, I don't think. Especially when we talk about communication, we we so often focus on what we're saying or what the other person is saying. We don't pay attention to what's happening inside. Yeah, we don't focus on what the basis is for communication. Exactly. I mean, like exactly. if I'm not ready to communicate, if I'm not in a state to be able to communicate, if I'm in the yellow light, which is actually where the shame spiral happens, that exactly. yellow light state, I'm, I'm a bit disabled in that moment, to be honest. Exactly. And I actually need to work on that. Step yeah, one. Vic Victoria mentioning, uh, be reminded that pain is normal and necessary. Again, I think as meditators, we can... Uh, we can put pressure on ourselves to thinking if we were better meditators, we wouldn't be suffering. But we know suffering is part of the game. Well, pain anyways, right? I mean, maybe yeah. maybe you could distinct, you know, That's make true. a distinction between pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. But it's true that pain is vital. Yeah. Yeah, these are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I'm just going to put up the website just so people can see it. Um, and there it is. And also the books, the book covers. And recommend both of the books. You know, the, um, the chapter in the Art of Mindful Communication is very um, concise. It's a very concise way to actually understand the method in, in more detail than we can get into today. And then if you really want to go deep, the, the five keys to mindful communication is fantastic. And then we also, we have a whole uh, pre-recorded course related to that. And then we have advanced trainings and on and on. So, and, and that the page that I put up in the chat will take you to more information about that. We really thank you for being here today. It's been such an honor to be invited. It's really wonderful to be here. Thanks to the whole team for putting this together. Thanks to the um, wonderful editing team of the Art of Mindful Communication for the invitation and for holding the space here today. And we hope that this is useful and you take this out into your life and your practice. Thank you very much, Greg and Chris. I, I, I might have a little adjustment that the title of the book, it, it changed to, to oh. not from the art of mindful communication, but uh, mindful communication that the, Aha. That I think the, I have oh, right. to know it. Otherwise yeah, people right, start sure. to look for a book that's not there. 
Yeah, but but I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Fritz. Thank you. Yeah, and thanks from me. I got lost in the middle of that call. I was kind of locked out, but thank you so much. Lovely to see you, Chris. Yeah. And, um, Greg, after working on these texts for so long. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, wonderful program. It's a shame this is so short, but can we, tr I mean, can, I mean, the pre recorded course, we can like book and, tr and use ourselves. You can help. jump in right now. It's okay. very quick and easy. Okay, that's fantastic. So, you and that's Susan Gillis Chapman teaching a lot of that material. So, you actually get to hear it from the progenitor of the material. It's very powerful. Okay. So, we can, any of us can like book that course as a pre recorded course so we can learn at our own pace. And then, if we want to carry on with that, we can book um, um, an advanced course. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And maybe also uh, Gregory and Chris uh, to share with the community that we talked about the option that we will explore after this uh, meeting about having a master class. And anyone would be interested in a master class that would certainly uh, last much longer than uh, today. And it would be donation based because it can't be done to put so many hours without any pay. So if you're interested, please let us know. We will put this out as an option to the whole community. But since you're already here, you are the first to be informed that we are exploring that option. Wow, fantastic. That would be yeah. ready. We'd be delighted. Yeah, and it would be wonderful because uh, I've, I've learned uh, so much today. I read the chapter, but even, I mean, this personal contact, it's just deepening the learning that you can have from reading. So I'm very grateful uh, for myself, but I also think uh, for all the people that I want to welcome who will see this recording, please let us know whether you are interested. Uh, we know that you are interested because you registered in numbers up to 200. So please go and see it and then let us know what, what else you want. Thank you very much for everyone being here yeah. in the holidays. For you, uh, Gregory, Chris, Victoria, Fritz, thank you. Thank you for making this possible. Thank you so much. Delighted okay. to be here. And have a great last day yeah. of the year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye, Bye everyone. Yeah. Bye. Hello, <laughs> Yeti. Thank you. Bye. 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 Chris. Bye. Jeffrey. Bye. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, I, okay. I, I have no idea what happened. And then I, I kept going out and then I saw a really strange thing. It happened after the breakout rooms. And then at the top there was little blue okay and then i went on that and so uh we we haven't had such a good because Zoom day. i called you back many times trying yeah, to from my side open it yeah i guess it's just learning you know i don't practice enough but i saw you were trying to add me and i was like and you were going loud shirt and i was going yes yes loud shirt and nothing was happening and then i suddenly mm -hmm. saw this okay at the top and it may have been to do with the breakout rooms but anyway it was a really good. You discovered something I've never seen. I've never seen that. Okay, there's so many things in Zoom that you only I discover know. by uh, today on my computer, which now I have for a year. I discovered the button that I accidentally pushed, and I was so grateful I discovered oh, that. I know. I mean, making mistakes is also sometimes a blessing. Oh wait, I forgot to stop the recording. So again, we will have to. <laughs>